Well, welcome back, everybody. Um, this is the picture we're going to be painting. It's a little ruined chapel, I think, that we found near Chamonix on our splendid holiday this year. Um, and it took my eye more than somewhat. Now, I'm going to use the watercolour idea of painting that I have uh, done with you before. I think the most recent example was uh, about four years ago when I did a picture of the, um, the outback in Australia, the forest part of it. Uh, so I'm going to try again to see if I can do it this time. The first thing you need if you're going to use this method is to have a completely white canvas. Um, you can't really work on top of another picture doing it this way. Uh, so if you are working on a canvas previously used, you have to blank out totally the picture underneath, either by using white oil paint or by repriming on top of your existing painting. Now, when I'm um, doing this, I'm not looking at the, um, the finished article. What I'm trying to see is the colors in the mid-tones or colors that I feel I can build on uh, as I work the way through the, uh, the picture. The picture itself will be very loosely painted. I won't use white at all. Um, if you use white when you're working very thinly like this, uh, it gets opaque and then you lose the watercolor quality of using the white canvas to shine through the glazes that you're putting on. So essentially, I'm glazing the canvas with tones that will underlie uh, both the darks and the lights that I'll be putting on afterwards. Uh, there are lots of greens in this picture. Um, some of them are very light indeed over here. Uh, there's this beautiful bronze tree of whatever description that is. In the chapel itself, I can see ochres, raw, raw ochre, and uh, raw sienna, and purples around here, which are rather attractive. I'm not too worried about this dark patch. That's a dark, so I ignore it. Um, same here. So I'm going to use a very drippy way of painting. I'm not sure about the color of this part of the picture. I think it doesn't really fit with the rest of the picture. So I'm liable to turn that more of an olive than of the sort of bluey green that it is. I presume that's a reflection in the sky. There's no sky in my picture. So, um, well, in any case, you alter the picture to shoot what you want to put in it. OK, so I'm using big brushes. Um, nice new floppy ones, too. Use a, quite a lot of terps, or in this case, zest it, to um, thin the paint down so that you get a nice runny texture, and the colors tend to blend one to another. This tree down here is very dark. I'm going to ignore that. I'm not going to think about putting that in yet, or the darks anywhere that will bring the picture to life. What I want to do is to just tease out the mid-tones to see if I can um, get the picture to, to hide on the canvas. And then when you put the light tones and the dark tones on, they bring bring the picture out of the canvas, almost like a sculpture. That's the basic idea. How well it will work, I know not, but we'll, we'll try. So, if I keep it in one hand, I'll see what I'm doing. Um, right, first of all, I'm soaking the brush in the zested and just putting some uh, zested, you should probably redden it there, uh, on the on the palette so that I've got something to work into. I'm going to take some raw sienna first. It's a good background, raw sienna. I'm just going to whisker it on. Not worry too much if it runs down a bit. That's, that's fine. It's a good base color anyway. Um, 
We'll put it all over actually, um, but I'm not going to. Probably a bit round here. A lot in the chapel down here. I haven't drawn it on, by the way. I'm just jiggling about where I think the chapel ought to go. And even if it doesn't go there, this can go under practically anything. So that's okay. No reason why it shouldn't go right down off the bottom. Okay, so that's that one. Um, take a bit of burnt sienna now, which gives me a nice um, brownie mix, which comes down here. That's a bit bright. Uh, I've got a couldn't find alizarin crimson, so I've got um, crimson lake, which will, I hope, do as well. That's more like that sort of colour. It comes down here too. You can have fun with this. You have lovely droopy, drippy colours. They're absolutely gorgeous, aren't they? Um, right. We can put some green in. There's no reason why we shouldn't use greens. We want to. Not quite sure what colour this is. Not bad. Not sure I want it there, so I'll wipe it out again. Add some turps to that. We have it nicely. This is quite a dark green, but of course, as they run down, they um, they lose that quality. And there's no reason, of course, why you can't put it in this other colour. Let's put a bit of it here. That might be a little bit light. Does it make lovely marks when it runs down? It's gorgeous. Uh, try to, well, we probably do want it over here. This is a nice canvas. It's quite a soft cotton. What else can we put in there? Well, I have a touch of purple in it. I'm going to need a different brush for that because I quite like the purple to be purple. Which one of those was the purple? I think that was. Okay. Right, okay. I would like this to be a bit more pure colour here, so I'm putting it here. You can put a bit of it up here in the trees. It's nice. Now, if I've got it in the wrong place, it doesn't matter. If it runs down in the wrong place, it doesn't matter because what you're going to end up in the end is painting over a lot of this. It's just. Um, there's two things. It wants to take takes off that fright of ah white canvas, and also it gives you some kind of grounding in what it is you're trying to to um, to paint. I think I'd like the uh, sienna down here to be a little bit stronger, so I'll put some extra in. So keeping it thin. And runny. At this stage, um, it will it'll run and, and um, join together. So you don't need to worry too much about uh, how it's going on.
Right. A little bit more of the darker paint. I've run out of turps. Can't put them on. I'm going to be doing this with the window open. I think. Right. Touch of blue is required. Use the wrong brush. I have got something on the floor, by the way. Quite, quite essential. When you're mucking about. Essentially, it's a it's a play. Hang on, I'm going to get another brush. another brush because these two have both got a bit of colour on them and I don't want to cloud the issue with this particular one. I just want to make these a bit more mid-tone than they are. I, I, I forget when I do this how, um, 
how the color fades as you as you put it on because it all becomes very very thinner drumming and it just sort of runs down the canvas and you you forget. On the other hand, if you add in as you're working a stronger color, then you feel it's going to pay off. You get some interesting runnels into the other um, somehow I've got a brown in there. How are we doing for time, Rachel? Might not need it all of that, actually. Right, I'm going to stand back now, which means walking around the camera. So excuse me for a moment. Right, this is my purple brush. I need to lift this a bit here. The chapel was beginning to drip off the bottom of the page. And higher up. I'm going to go in with a bit stronger paint now. I'm not quite so, um, so runny. It's still fa fairly runny, but um, not as Run is the first one. And over time, it will in fact run down. I'm beginning to think more about the shapes of what I've got here and what I'm intending to do with it. Uh, so I want. Having gone in with a very loose paint, I'm now attempting to go in darker and failing miserably. There we are. That might do it. There we are. That's better.
I think I'll leave it there. Right, I'm reasonably happy with that. Can you see? If you look, um, half close your eyes, you can see, I know the chat doesn't define, but the colours are um, going together nicely. Um, I've got more or less what I want where I want to paint on top. I can either bring out the light or push back the dark, depending on what it is I want to do. But that would really have to dry before I try to do anything else. And it will be dry by next week. So if you end up with something vaguely like that, that, uh, that would be useful. Okay. Right, I have used um, raw sienna, burnt sienna, crimson lake, because I couldn't find a lucerne that would open. Um, ultramarine violet, ultramarine blue, strange green that I, I think it's a chrome green, um, a touch of iridium, just a little bit, and a little bit of uh, cadmium yellow. I think that's basically what I've used. But you have to look at your picture and see the colours you see. Um, and don't be too worried about um, making the, uh, the chapel look all one colour, because when you paint over it, you'll create the structure. And the colour that's underneath <coughs> helps to provide the rugged look to the um, the stones that the thing is made of. There is a touch of purple there. And if you work on top of that with a thicker paint, you'll get that bit of purple coming through the cracks and that kind of thing. But don't look for definition, just look for a seeming pleasant semblance of lights and dark uh, midtones that, that will, you'll be able to pull your picture out of. And since